This R. Askredit user asks. What is one thing you regret about your teenage years? Giving up something I loved, writing, so I could dedicate more time to studies. While I did manage to achieve excellent grades. I really wish it didn't come at the expense of putting a stop to writing and creating fictional worlds. I thought I'd always stay passionate about writing. And that I could jump right back into it once I was done with school. But I realized too late that it isn't that easy. Because I hadn't been writing for so long. It just isn't the same anymore. No matter how much I try. That spark and magic just isn't there anymore. It's just sad to think about what I lost. Mine's about the same. Though I'm unsure if this was actually in my teens or when I was 20. I used to write like crazy. Then. I decided to submit something to be published. I got rejected. It was just a standard form letter. But I took it way too personally and decided I wasn't going to write again. Years later. My younger son. Eight at the time. Told me that he's writing a book. I was inspired by my son and decided to work on a short story. That exploded into a novel and then expanded into a trilogy in progress. I self-published the first book four years ago and have been writing various pieces ever since. Still. I wonder what tales I could have come up with had I not spent two decades not writing. I have two recommendations for this. If you want to try writing some more. Just try writing a three sentence story. Pick a small prompt. Like a one word prompt. And write three sentences about it. Those sentences can be as short or long as you like. One of my writing professors. I was a journalism major told us that the reason behind writing block has an underlying issue. So if you have the time or money or ability, therapy might actually help unblock you. This happened to me with reading. I was a total bookworm through elementary and middle school. But then I got busy in high school. Homework. Extracurriculars. Work. And I just didn't have the time or energy to devote to it anymore. Now I'm in college trying to get back into it by rereading some old favorites and I'm sad to find how short my attention span is. I used to read whole books in a night. Not involving myself more. I never went on school trips. I didn't go to prom. I skipped anything extra and a lot of what was mandatory. It carried into my adult life and it seems obvious to say. But I guess I'd be a different person now if I had been then. I'd waited my whole life for my senior year of high school. All the trips, dances, activities. I dreamed of going places with my friends and having fun and doing things I had too much anxiety to do before. My mom pulled me out of high school permanently within the last few months of my junior year and held me hostage in my house until I turned 18 for her own selfish reasons. I missed everything. Do you mind if I ask what those selfish reasons were? Oh not at all. The main reason was because of a boy and her intense hatred towards him. I dated said boy when I was 15. And for the next three years she wreaked havoc on my life to keep me from him even though we had broken up when I was 15. And blamed him for ruining my relationship with her. I told her many times that no. She ruined the relationship by destroying my mental health. Via me having no privacy at all. Feeling anxious when she was home BC she could snap at any moment. Never knowing if I could keep someone or something in my life for long because she always got rid of thing that went against her beliefs. Telling everyone I was a rape victim as justification for not letting me leave the house. Etc. She thinks it is his fault that I hate her. So she took me out of school permanently. Two years after this issue began to get me away from him. Which in turn, damaged my friendships and GPA. When I told her she was ruining everything for me. She said I would thank her later. Still not grateful LMAO. Not listening to the dozens of people warning me to not date the guy the first was with. Could have saved myself a whole lot of pain and heartaches. I didn't make very many friends in high school. I had. Like. My one best friend. And a few other girls I was on friendly enough terms with to eat lunch but never saw after school. But that was it. 
years later. I went to my reunion and realized they were all lovely people who I'd be friends with today if we still lived near each other. I now live out of the country. And the issue at the time was with me. Not with them. Shy isn't the right word for what I was then I talk quite a lot but withdrawn definitely is applicable. It never occurred to me for example to actually invite someone to go do something never told anyone at school who I wanted to know better. Hey. Want to hang out at the mall and go catch a movie? For example. Now of course I know that was silly. And it's not a huge shocker that I never got invites if I never extended them myself. But that just want my thought process at the time. I grew since then. And am nowhere as withdrawn as I was. And I have enough friends to make me happy. But I am jealous when I see my brother and sister with all their friends from high school who they're still in touch with. Because one important detail about friendship you don't realize as a teenager is how wonderful older friends are who remember you and your life from different periods. My brother and sister have this in spades. And I just. Don't. Same. I see everyone I went to high school with have all of these fun shared memories that I'm not part of and that's kinda. Sad. I should have gotten in shape. Would have been so gn easy back then. It was much harder when I was 29. If you're in shape now. But weren't in high school. You can always brag that you still fit in all of your high school clothes. Exactly. I was super fit in high school and now I have no chance in fitrin in those clothes ever again. Not listening to my parents who warned me time and time again about many things but. Obviously. Teenage me knew better. Just one? starting to smoke started when i was 12. i'm extremely nicotine addicted now wish i never started to smoke i know i'm not telling you anything you don't already know but after 17 years i quit smoking i made a bunch of attempts but this last time it stuck and i'm almost at a year with no nicotine edit this is the easiest three dollars oh, oh oh i've ever saved congratulations and good job Saying no when invited to parties or any kind of social gathering. So many opportunities missed. You guys were getting invited to parties? Same. All I really did was study as looking back. I feel like I missed out on teen years being a carefree time and having such important friendships. I wish I had allowed myself to live a little more. I was so focused on doing well in school. Working and making money and being overly involved in my extracurricular of choice. I never really let myself let loose. I was so obsessed with being practical. I never dated anyone. I never went to any parties. I never stayed out all night or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. I had fun with my friends. But now I'm an adult struggling to date and I feel really uncomfortable with physical affection of any kind because I'm so aware of my inexperience. I just wish I'd let myself do the dumb things teenagers are supposed to do. When I was 16. I dated a guy who was 24. I knew then it was fairly creepy but when I think about it now. I seriously cringe. Thankfully I had enough brains to not have sx with him. I started dating a 25 year old dude at age 14. He left his wife for me. I posted a ton of age can't stop love memes on MySpace. We got engaged. It was so weird because he also wanted me to date kids my age so didn't miss out. I also would have boyfriends or girlfriends my age and think it was totally normal to not tell them about my real relationship. I left him when I was 16 because I honestly was outgrowing him. I'm 27 now and look back at that time with just astonishment. I was the only child of a single mother just raging with alcoholism and some PK disillusioned himself into thinking he was helping me when really he was just taking advantage of an abused and neglected child. If I met him again in public I would have quite a few choice words. Good thing you stopped it. I had a friend who was in the same spot as you were and it was hard for her to even talk about it. OMG I did this in high school. 2. It was that whole thing where he's like. You're so mature for your age. And everything. 
looking back on that years later. I was like, wow, he was really gross. Thinking I was in love. Quote. Having sx with Sherry. She gave me crabs and they are a bh to get rid of. Sherry is a we. Picking up that knife to harm myself. Thinking that everything was the end of the world. I was a nervous wreck. Wish I would have just chilled out. Man. Quote. I should have listened to the stoner kids. LMAO. Not paying attention in school. I was a massive goof and only started paying attention when it was too late. As a result my dream job may be just out of my reach. Study hard kids. Your dream job may depend on it. Edit. Dream job is to be a pilot. Good message. Hear lots about schooling not being the be all or end all but this shows that you shouldn't let opportunities like that pass by. Keep working my man. You can still get it. Colon. I see it like this. You're in school for a reason. It's your time you're in there so you might as well make the most of it. Find friends. Find hobbies and study hard. I understand that certain subjects may not be relevant to what you want to do but sometimes life happens. Your dream job changes and it doesn't hurt to have those qualifications. But it does hurt to not have them. In regards to my dream job. There is a age limit I'm quickly approaching and I still have a lot to get done but I'm trying. Cheers though. D. So true. I always told myself that I would forget it in a few years. So why even learn it? Turns out that's not really true. And even if it were. It would still help me to have graduated from a better university. If you're reading this and still in school. Please try your hardest not to make the same mistake I did. Working though them. I never had that carefree kid, teenage time. I grew up on a poor farm. Then moved into an apartment with my mom. She couldn't hold a job so I worked. I had fun I had friends we did stuff. But I also had to budget rent. Electric bill. Car payment. Phone bills. Plus I went to school. Figure out how to squeeze $25 into two weeks worth of groceries. Went without because we had to. It's always going to be that way. Unless I win the lottery I'll never get to know that feeling. How are you doing now? Decent. Wife. House. Job. Pushing people away that tried to become friends with me. I regret that. When I was a teenager. It was. Almost. Impossible to be gay. I spent so much time waiting for something to happen. Like sitting on some steps outside of a house waiting for something to happen. Hanging out with people I did not really like waiting for something to happen. I feel like so much time was wasted waiting for something to happen. Instead of doing something or making things happen. Good answer. But DN. I did this till my mid-twenties. All my friends were the same way. Content to do next to nothing. We had each other. And it was actually pretty great. But I was lonely. I could be in a room full of my best friends and feel incredibly lonely. Now. I agree with the thought that you shouldn't feel obligated to be in a couple. That you should be happy with yourself. That you don't need a romantic relationship to be happy. But that was what was missing in my life. And what I wanted to change about it. I started asking my friends for referrals. Which was tough because most of them were single guys just like me. Who went to a sausage fest college. We just didn't know many women. At all. Anyway. Five years. Two fairly crazy relationships. And a lot of bad online matchmaking dates. I finally got a referral that ended up working out. Am now happily married with two kids. To anyone reading. It's worth it. Reaching out. Expanding your boundaries. It's hard. I'm glossing over years of depression setbacks and heartache but i'm glossing over it because i can it's nothing compared to how happy i've become it was agony to go through it but it's nothing now well not nothing i appreciate my wife life now because of the things i went through my point is it's worth it oh god i relate incredibly and yes 
it sucks. Pink Floyd's time sums that up pretty well. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos.